Welcome to all of you to the second session of uh, Faith and Globalization Seminar. And I want to extend a special welcome to our main professor, Professor Tony Blair. Uh, thank you. Thank you. In the last year when we were, when, when we were doing the same thing, people uh, used to ask me, well, w what's the relationship of the two of you as professors? And then um, I said, well, it looks something like this. I am his academic sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> so nice, and, um, it, it's a pleasant relationship of being academic sidekick to uh, Prime Minister Tony Blair. Today's session is stakes in faith and globalization. And I think both Professor Ray and uh, Professor Blair will talk more about this. What I want to do is just to step back a little bit and then ask the question, well, what do you mean by faith? And what do we mean also by globalization? And then to sketch out for you some forms of faith engagements with globalization processes. We'll see how far we can, uh, we can get. So, and the definitions that I'm going to give you are what people call stipulative definitions. I'm going to define how I'm going to use those terms or how we are going to roughly use those terms in, uh, this, uh, in this course. Uh, we can debate those definitions and they will be for debate as the course um, continues. So, first, what is globalization? Well, you can describe globalization as something like a planetary process which was historically driven primarily by interest in uh, trade, in learning about and spreading religion, in co conquest, and interest in adventure. And in recent centuries, with capitalism, a version of trade, as a major force driving globalization. And that's a planetary process that is leading to a world of high level of interconnectivity in which information, goods, and services flow increasingly freely. A world not just of interconnectivity, but also of interdependence with relatively few independent locales. And a world in which, as some scholars say, space has contracted, meaning that the whole planet, in a sense, has become a new locality. And people who live on that planet are increasingly becoming disembedded, demurred from particular places, so-called disembedded cosmopolitans. And then another feature is that this globalization produces a consciousness of the world as a single place. We're all aware that this is what's happening, that we're interconnected, that we're interdependent, and that the world has shrunk. So what is faith now? Now, I already mentioned in my first introductory comments that faith is not kind of, or at least people of faith don't think of faith as, you may have different opinions about this, but people of faith don't think of faith as a set of irrational convictions. Things that you believe blindly and cannot prove and that's why it's called faith rather than knowledge or something like that, right? Or it's not a mere feeling of awe relating oneself to some mystery that both repels and fascinates. But rather faith is convictions and practices of concrete faith traditions and faith communities. And they have at least the following functions. Provide an overarching interpretation of reality. They sketch how the world is made up, faiths do. They give an account also of human flourishing. What does it mean to live well? An account that is situated in this overarching picture of reality. And then also, thirdly, they provide guidance as to how people should live, even feel and think, and act so as to be in sync with the reality and so as to flourish. Provides guidance for it and provides also motivation for that. Now that's what traditional faiths are doing under the influence of globalization processes. Increasingly, we do have, especially in the Western world, something what, what one can describe as smorgasbord 
religiosity, catch a scan religi religiosity, which is basically individual people, maybe with the help of groups, um, pulling various nuggets of wisdom from various traditions and creating a usable religiosity for themselves. That too is religion today. Now let's look at now faith and globalization and its relationship between the two. First, I want to sketch briefly globalization's impact on faith, and then I want to look at faith's possible impact on globalization. Now, some people think that globalization is inherently secularizing force. A good deal of sociologists over the past three, two centuries have thought in similar terms, and there are many people today who think so as well. Now, there's also an opposite view, which says that globalization indeed is nudging people to embrace faith. They maybe feel left behind, maybe they feel uprooted, and therefore are in search of consolation in faith. Maybe they sense meaninglessness of uh, certain ends that they have been pursuing as a result of being inserted in the globalization processes and searching for somehow deeper meaning in life. That also is a possible relationship of globalization to faith. And globalization is also, I think, shaping the form which faith takes. Faiths get transformed in interaction with globalization processes. Uh, I already spoke about this smorgasbord religiosity. Or you have something like preference and thriving of world faiths faiths that are not tied to a particular place, but that are easily portable and exportable, Pentecostalism being a very good example of such a faith. And then finally, globalization is shaping the modes of transmission of faith. You have uh, many faiths who, for instance, might feel a uh, certain push against globalization, process of globalization, using all the technological means that the globalization provides in order to spread that faith, whether that's TV, whether that's internet, latest technologies of which I don't know anything yet, <laughs> they are certainly using <laughs> in order to promote uh, faith. So globalization has profound impact upon the world of faith, just as globalization, I think, has profound impact on all aspects of our lives. And we'll pick up some of these themes, especially in our session four, on secularization and transformation of faith, to see what's going on with faiths in the context of contemporary globalizing world. Um, let's me now take a look at faith's stand, faith stance toward globalization, sort of the other aspect of it. <coughs> and these stances range from, um, on the one hand, denouncing globalization completely. And for today, you have read a text that certainly feels that way. That's the Agape text, right, produced by World Council of Churches, which, uh, at least in the present form, completely uh, rejects globalization as incompatible with some of the most cherished values of faith. Um, at the other extreme is complete embracing of globalization. Some would argue that globalization processes are in fact realization of some of the ideas that are embedded in both Judaism and Christianity about human beings, about freedom of human beings, and so forth. Uh, there are other, the other option is to disregard globalization processes. Empires come and empires go, but faith remains. Globalization has come, globalization will go, but faiths will remain, right? So this is part and parcel of the transitoriness of human existence over against which faiths stand. And then finally, there's an option of faiths shaping globalization processes. We have, uh, you have had as an assignment a text by Jonathan Sachs, Dignity of Difference, that prologue to that book uh, shows you some possibilities of engaging globalization in such a way as to both affirm and in some ways also shape what is happening within those uh, processes. And often it's the case that you've got some religious traditions 
who have all of these paradigmatic stances combined in one, right? <laughs> some aspects of globalization we want to completely embrace, some aspects we want to completely disregard, deny and disregard, others we want to shape. So it's a, it's a complex relationship that fates have to globalization processes. Um, Now, um, I have uh, mentioned very briefly in my previous remarks, um, I have mentioned about uh, kind of two strands of engagement uh, between faith and globalization that we are going to be, be pursuing in this uh, course. And uh, you have had in your readings, Jonathan Sachs mentions those. Uh, first is faiths looking at each other and examining their own relationship to one another. Here, the issue is exclusivity of fates and uh, propensity sometimes of fates to stabilized close group identities, which then stand in adversarial relationships to other identities. The question was how to live in a complex world uh, where difference thrives, how to live in such a way as to affirm as Jonathan Sachs would put, the dignity of difference. So that's a one strand which we will be looking at, mutual relationships of faith as it plays itself out under the condition of globalization processes. And then the second aspect that we will look at is what faiths might have to say standing, so to say, together, shoulder to shoulder, and looking at globalization processes. What challenges are there that faiths Phase, what kinds of contributions can fates make to globalization processes? As one of the things that I have highlighted is that fates sketch this overarching interpretation of life, and such overarching interpretation of life has to somehow fit with the ends that are being pursued with globalization processes. How these two things fit, what is the conception of human flourishing that is being carried on the wings of globalization processes? And what is the conception of human flourishing that various faiths uh, advocate? These two issues are very significant. And I'll end with this comment. Uh, those of you who have uh, done some, uh, you've discussed the, the case study that we have had for, um, for today, was it right, uh, on 9-11? And uh, it, I'm not sure whether, the, I, I have to remind myself whether the reading is clear on that, but when we had John Kelsey, whose text you have read here last year as a resource person, it was very clear from his comments that one ought not to understand Osama bin Laden's uh, vision as simply kind of terrorist spite. There is a actually vision of human flourishing a vision that I don't share particularly, that I'm not very excited about it, I think is detrimental, but nonetheless, it is a vision of what it means to live well as a Muslim, particular understanding of what it means to live well as a Muslim, and it's that vision, really, that is driving the whole process. I think that is symptomatic about the engagement of faiths with globalization processes. Some are, of course, more in tune with the globalization processes. Other are others are much more opposed to globalization processes in their vision of human flourishing. But that's what fates are about. And that's where the intersection happens. And I hope that that's also the place where fruitful conversation between globalization processes, globalization and fates traditions can take place. I think this is as much as I would want to say by the way of introduction. And I will now ask my co-professor, Douglas Ray, to say a few comments, and then Professor Blair will continue. <laughs>